tonight I wanted to uh, bring up an old video that I found that uh, I remember distinctively uh, recording. Uh, this was done about three years ago uh, from today um, and it is one that I remember just very well because of what the problem ended up being compared to the work that had been done to it up to the point that uh, when it was brought to me um, I was just kind of blown away that how some shops or people approach attempting to I guess fix problems in cars without um, full proper uh, knowledge of, of the system and it's a little bit of, uh, the, the quality is not the best. Uh, this is again, like I said, three years ago at least. Um, before I even knew if I wanted to present these publicly. Um, so be easy on me, don't scald me. It's, it, I'm willing to put this out because I feel and believe the content of the process is what's important um, about the testing method or what to test and how I tested and um, even little attempts of trying to confirm so, so just hopefully um, you can bear through a little bit of the quality and um, take in the process that I took. Got a 2008 Lexus GS 460 it's uh, the one with the V8 in it and the customer brought it to me after they've uh, attempted to do some work on it to rectify the code that it keeps throwing um, for, uh, I believe he said, the speed sensor code. Um, and from what he told me quickly before dropping it off, that they actually they put a transmission in it and something about the wheel bearings. Um, Something to that extent. I didn't get too much detail out of it. Not sure why the transmission was done. Um, I could probably see why they had tried the wheel bearing, but uh, nonetheless, not sure if it's all related or, or what's going on or which code exactly and which module. So, what I'm going to do is just uh, scan the modules, all the relevant ones, and see what kind of code it's got for it and go from there okay so we got the key on the uh, interface connected select Lexus we'll do uh, automatic selection Diagnosis will do uh, look at the powertrain modules. And let's see, it's PO500. Obviously, it's current and only covered in it. Vehicle speed sensor, that would be the uh, overall speed input. Uh, that the uh, either the well I'm sure the cluster has to receive it obviously engine computers not seeing it and the reason why it's still on the code um, let me check the ABS see if that has any code Does present basically telling you just to check the engine and computer for codes there. Uh, let me see if there's anything in the 
instrument cluster. No way to read codes in that. Well, <clears throat> as far as what we got, we're going to go with a PO500. And uh, we'll research that, see what that shows. Now, if you pull up Toyota's information on this code, uh, basically, the, the way the system works on this, it takes, uh, there's not one actual vehicle speed sensor it actually it starts off by all four speed sensors if you can see right there on the left then they go to what they call the skid control ECU which is your ABS traction control unit from there it gets converted to four pulse uh, signal uh, to the instrument cluster uh, and from there, it leaves the instrument cluster and in the same four pulse segment, the goes to the ECM. Uh, and obviously, the faster you travel, the more of those segments you'll see and have on the screen uh, or messages being sent to the module. And... Basically, I guess we're going to have to probably check, uh, I might check the data display from the speed sensors in the traction control unit, but uh, take a look at that, depending on that, most likely probably check the lines, going to the cluster and out of the cluster go into the ECM and then we'll take some uh, check the signals see if we're seeing the four pulses and see who's not receiving or sending to uh, cause this code to come up in the ECM so probably next step um, find out pin numbers locations of each control unit and uh, also look in the reading the four wheel speed sensors in the traction control unit. So I located where the ECM is on this vehicle and it's under the hood. It's covered up with this panel. Uh, just unbolt that. And this here is your ECM. According to the diagram connector number, the uh, speed signal is on this end connector. I believe they call it A6 and it's pin 24. It's a uh, purple and white wire. So I'm tapped in there. Got one lead hooked up to it with the alligator clip which I actually secured uh, so that it doesn't move vibrate when we uh, drive the vehicle and then so that's going to be your input to the ECM that comes from the cluster and then I've got the instrument cluster removed kind of just hanging there um, and I found the two wires the input from the traction control unit and then the output one of them is uh, pin 9 the other is pin 29 I believe 29 is the input pin 9 is the output going to the ECM <clears throat> I don't know if you can or not. The purple one is the input from the traction control unit. And the other one is on the green wire. It's hard to show you on here, but the red lead is on the 
input. It's not the purple wire. Green one's one going to the uh, engine computer, which would be the same as the uh, blue lead that I got at the computer, um, which will help us check the, I guess, integrity of that wire from here to the ECM. Uh, if we've got a signal coming out of the cluster. We'll also, while driving, I'm going to try to see if the uh, needle, which is the center gauge there, if that'll actually move, um, which will let us know if the cluster's, I guess, accepting or processing the signal from the traction control unit. So we'll, we'll be able to check a bunch of things here at once. Signal coming in to the cluster, signal leaving the cluster, see if the speed on needle moves, and we'll check the uh, uh, line at the ECM also uh, and see what, what we get on all of those. So I will uh, attempt to go on a test drive. Got the Pico down here on the floor and then the laptop over there. So, uh, let me see if I can actually film driving. If not, I will drive it and then get a shot of what I, uh, info I gathered on the scope. Here's a shot of uh, the four wheel speed sensors I've got pulled up on the scanner on the uh, data screen. Um, got all four running. We'll try to move the vehicle, see if we get a signal from all of them, or any of them. signals being fed to the traction control unit which tells me all four wheel speed sensors are at least working uh, and being seen by the traction control unit so now after that it's supposed to be sent to the cluster which we're tapped in and we'll check and see if we do uh, have the four pulses being set. So <clears throat> there's a shot of the Pico. Uh, the signals are there, key is on. I'm assuming almost similar to the wheel speed sensors. Once we start rolling, if uh, any of those four pulses are, are being generated, seen, received, or sent, uh, they'll show up on the screen here. So I'll do the same thing, start backing out. See if we go fast enough to catch a signal. And then uh, we'll see what we got. So, here we go. So, you can see there, we definitely got one of them producing the signal, and that's the red trace, and the other two are staying flat. And double check. Okay, so my, my red lead is going to the purple wire, which is the uh, one coming from the traction control unit to the cluster. So, I'm almost, well, I am going to say that the cluster is 
not processing it fully and sending it out to the engine computer, uh, which would basically condemn this instrument cluster, and that's what they would need. But one one other thing I want to try to check to see if this needle does move, and um, just to see if, if it maybe internally is seeing it and just on the uh, processor is unable to send it out uh, out of the board to the uh, engine computer so I'm going to try to do the same thing or try to roll fast enough to see if this needle will move and attempt to try to get a shot of that being that I'm here alone and only got two hands and all this <laughs> mumbo jumbo going on I don't tap anything, squish any wires. <clears throat> so. Just backing out. Wasn't fast enough. So Actually, I'm gonna try and get some speed here. Hopefully not hit anything. And hopefully, I can keep the camera on the gauge. does move, which then, uh, this just confirms everything, the uh, cluster is just not being able to either process it to send it out or something on the board, uh, it's gone bad, but I would just say that it's definitely confirmed reasons why engine control unit's not seeing it. It's due to a bad instrument cluster. So. I will uh, <clears throat> go ahead and let the customer know. Definitely a good uh, way to confirm it and know for sure what's going on with it. So, that's all on this one. Now, just to fulfill my curiosity, I wanted to see what would happen if I tie in the input and output with this lead here at the cluster while still simultaneously feeding into the cluster from the traction control unit. Now I'm wondering if it's going to, well, I'm going to put those four pulses on the output going to the ECM and see what the ECM does, um, like I said, just out of curiosity and also to see it uh, come up on the screen, just to see what it does. So I've got the two, like I said, tied in together, still feeding it to the cluster. Trying to drive it again. I think what I want to do is I'm gonna clear the code out of the ECM while I attempt this. Little uh, 
bypass thing. Clear. Yes. Okay. Codes are clear. Shut the key off. Let it cycle. Put the scanner down. Try to get situated to do a drive. the green. There's all three. And I'm going to back up and see what it does. on the brakes. <laughs> Almost lost the laptop. So we're definitely getting some sort of square ways as far as the uh, voltage level. Not sure if that's exactly what the ECM wants to see or if it's clear enough signal. Uh, yeah, we turned it off. Let me check for codes. On that little drive, it did not see uh, a reason to throw a code, so I'm wondering if that's a good enough signal for the uh, ECM, but uh, all right, like I said, I'll shut this back off. We'll uh, analyze that real quick. With the uh, with what I'm concerned about is voltage levels. See if I can find some information of uh, what levels it should be at, and uh, I'll probably also attempt to do a longer test drive and see what it does then also, and also do another drive cycle. But uh, shut this off. We'll take a look at that. We'll look for some info on voltage levels and go from there. Just a quick update, wanted to verify on a uh, second and longer faster test drive what uh, the computer would see or not see and with the uh, two leads jumped and it is still throwing a code so voltage signals are just not correct, not proper. The signal's probably too choppy also 
um, just overall not correct as far as what it should see but uh, again confirms that uh, situation we got with the bad cluster and uh, that it needs to be processed through the cluster and sent out of it with the correct uh, voltage levels and clean signal to the ECM and also why did this second test drive I look down real quick and notice that when it's jumped bypass like that the needle does not move so uh, being at that input going into the cluster when it's being jumped and bypassed and not able to drop from 12 volts down to zero that also in itself is not a correct signal for the cluster for that to interpret and process and display it on the needle like it was before the uh, before we jumped the two leads so just verifying everything you know that I can and just you know feeding my curiosity um, cluster needs to see 0 to 12 volts from the traction control unit and when it does then everything works properly as far as being displayed but the uh, output side of the board is just not sending it out to the uh, ECM and then if you don't give it the 0 to 12 volts coming in it, it won't even process anything and then not display on the needle and not get to the ECM and be a worst case scenario uh, worse than what it was before so tell the customer what he needs and just go from there just wanted to show an update on a little bonus material so I hope you enjoyed that one again like I said it, uh, it was one that I did a while ago um, but I found it just cool or interesting about uh, being able to just break down the system and tap into all those different places all in one shot and be able to make a good call and the key points of it is just knowing the system how it works and the reason why the code was being generated uh, and, and so on and so forth and once you know that and then you know where to kind of go and start and where to uh, test and what to test what to look for um, and that's just exactly what I did uh, like I said and being that uh, a, a transmission was installed on this, uh, all, all bearings and uh, sensors, uh, who knows what else, I, you know, I just, I can't, um, I can't remember, it was a while ago, but I, I do remember some of those big major parts that were replaced. Um, when I approached the customer, uh, because the, the reason for them is the check engine light, you know, the, they don't want to see check engine light. Uh, even though it drove well, blah, 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 the speedometer was working. They kept telling me the codes for speed sensor, this, this, and that, you, you know, blah, blah, blah. So when I told them that the, the vehicle was going to need an instrument cluster, it, it was almost like he, he couldn't understand or he couldn't comprehend or famine the fact that what I was telling him that it needed to fix this speed sensor code in the engine computer was going to be rectified by an instrument cluster like I think he literally did not believe me he questioned me more than once asking if if the actual cluster was going to be the problem I said yes I said the, the transmission was not needed the bearings this is that the code the reason for the code and, and the computer is because of bad cluster and, and tried to explain but by, at that point it's I, I think I might have even lost him, so I actually don't even know um, what they ended up doing. Um, I'm pretty sure eventually they probably did put a cluster in it, because um, I did. I never did hear back about about it, but um, I know for sure 100%, and I'm assuming we now both know with breaking down the process and verifying by jumping the signal. Um, that in order to make the engine computer happy it has to see pulses obviously with the correct voltage level for it to be for all modules to be happy but uh, 
um, that's that's what it took. Uh, that was my experience with it, and um, I hope it helps you know open your mind up for testing procedures and methods, and not always be like black and white and by the book, and you know, I have to follow this step, I have to follow this step. No, kind of you know know where you're going because of the system, but try to be a little bit uh, open-minded and maybe sometimes creative. And uh, if you're needing to, try to verify some some uh, operations and, and theories and, and and show good compared to bad. So um, that's all on this one. It's a quick short one. Again, apologize for the quality. Um, even now, probably these are the ones I've put out are not even the best, but... I, I thank you guys for watching, and then um, I'll try to continue to um, put out content that hopefully is helpful for people in the industry.